thank you for joining me. In this segment, we're, I'm going to introduce how to balance chemical reactions. To balance a chemical reaction, what I need to do is make sure that I have the same number of each element on both sides. So I need the same bariums, I need the same chloride, chlorines, aluminums, sulfurs, and oxygen. And I need the same on the reactant side as I have on the product side. Um, so there's a variety of ways you can do this. It's trial and error. Um, there's one kind of guideline you can do, and that's if you have an element all by itself or a diatomic, you want to save those for last. So save those for last, especially so do elements last, then diatomics last second to the last if you have both, because putting a number in front of those won't change your count. Now, we cannot alter bonding, so you cannot change subscripts. So you can't change subscripts when you balance. All we can change are coefficients in front. You cannot change the subscripts that tell you um, how many are bonded within that compound. So those are kind of some of your basic guidelines there. But it really is a lot of trial and error, and I strongly recommend you use a pencil, um, especially if you're just starting. Now, um, some people can do it in their heads, some people can do that in their heads after some time, um, but I've seen some students use this kind of grid uh, to help them out. So they'll count, I have one barium on the reactant side, I have two chlorines, I have two aluminums. Notice that that three counts for everything inside the parentheses. So I have three sulfurs and I have three times four or twelve oxygens. Okay, on the react product side I have one barium, okay, I have one sulfur, I have four oxygens, I have one aluminum, and I have three chlorines. All right, where you start is somewhat random, so I'll often just go left to right. And um, so I've got one barium and one barium, so I don't have to worry about that. I've got to get these chlorines balanced. So the least the lowest common multiple of two and three is six. So that means this one with two, I have to multiply by a three, and the one with three on the product side, I have multiplied by two. So now I have three times two is six, and I have two times three is six. But you notice when I did that, and this is where it gets a little crazy, I changed my barium to a 3 on the reactant side, and I changed my aluminum to a 2 on the reactant side when I did that. Okay, so now I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go back up to barium. I have 3, and I need a 3, so I'm going to go ahead and get that balanced. And now I want to check all the rest of my stuff, just get a recount of what's going on. So I have two aluminums and two aluminums, two and two. So my aluminum's balanced, my chlorine's balanced, my barium's balanced. So I have three sulfur still, and now because of this three in front, I now have three sulfurs on my product side, and because of this three in front, I now have 12 oxygens. So I've got 3, three 6, 2, 3, and 12. Now this really annoys a lot of teachers. It doesn't bother me. Um, there's an implied one there. Some teachers don't like you to write that, so make sure you listen carefully to your teacher. I, I don't mind that because that's just a reminder as you're learning to balance that you're aware that that was a one and you were intentional about that being a number one. Okay, the next one, a piece of zinc. So zinc is a metal, it's not mercury, so it's a solid. Reacts with hydrochloric acid. Hopefully you've done your naming. Acids are aqueous. 
to produce zinc chloride. So to produce, I drew an arrow. Zinc chloride is ZnCl2, and it should say a solution of. So that's aqueous, because there's water present, and hydrogen gas. Zinc chloride is soluble in water. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, I'm going to save my zinc for last, because putting a number in front of the zinc won't change anything else. So I'm going to save it for last. All right, I have one hydrogen on this side, and I have two hydrogens on my product side. So I'm going to put a two in front of that. So now I have two hydrogens and two hydrogens. I have one zinc and one zinc. I have two chlorines and I have two chlorines. So that is now a balanced chemical equation. And again, if you're one of my students, I'm okay if you put ones there. But again, a lot of teachers don't like that, so pay attention to your class. All right, and then one more that I have. I have propane is combusted in the present. To combust means to burn. So propane is a gas. I would have told my students that in advance. Excess oxygen. That means I have complete Combustion. If you're IB, I want you to pay close attention to that. Complete combustion forms CO2. Incomplete combustion forms carbon monoxide or maybe some pure carbon, some soot. So be careful of the wording there. Um, oxygen's a gas, carbon dioxide's a gas, and water vapor. Okay. So now we can just start counting atoms on both sides. I have three carbons and I have one carbon. So I'm going to put a three in front. Remember, you never change subscripts, only coefficients. Okay, so now I've got my carbons. I've got eight hydrogens here. So I'll write them down for those of you who need that for now. I have eight hydrogens on my reactant side. I've got two on my product side. My least common multiple is eight, so I'm going to put a four there. So now I've turned that two into an eight. So those are balanced. Um, on this side, I have two oxygens. Sometimes I'll write that out so it doesn't look like a zero. And I've got three times two, because that distributes. So I have um, six oxygens there. And I have four times one, or four oxygens in the water, for a total of 10 oxygens. So I need to put a five there, so I'll have 10 oxygens and a one there. Okay, I hope that gave you some guidance for how to balance chemical equations. It truly is a trial and error. I'm going back and forth a little bit. And so good luck with that process, and thanks for joining me.